All right, folks, so today we've got another quick unboxing and setup video. And today we're going to be taking a look at something that a few people have asked about. This is the Easy Flash Omega Flash Cart for the Game Boy Advance. All right, so let's start off by taking a look at the box. Obviously, you can see there it's pretty minimalist. Uh, it just has the Easy Flash logo on it with the Omega symbol, uh, obviously embossed and glossy, which looks kind of nice. Quite like the design. And you can see there as I turn this over, mine did get a little bit crushed in the mail because it is quite thin cardboard. But then on the back, there's just a simple image showing the original Game Boy Advance size cartridge and the Nintendo DSi adapter shell that also comes with it. But other than that, no other information on the box. So popping the box open here, let's see what we've got. First off, we've got a USB 2.0 micro SD card adapter. So that's kind of handy. You'll need that in a little bit. Next, right behind the Easy Flash, we have the DSi shell adapter. So that'll allow you to use the Easy Flash in the Nintendo DSi and the cartridge will be flush with the system, which is actually a really nice touch. I'm quite impressed with that. And then finally, we've got the Easy Flash cartridge itself. So if you've seen the EverDrive GBA X5 Mini, this looks incredibly similar. I really like the smoke color shell they've picked for this. And obviously you can see there, it has the Easy Flash logo embossed in it. So again, quite a minimalist design, but overall I think that looks really nice. And then you can see on the right side of the cartridge, there's the SD card slot, so that's where the SD card will live. The back of the cartridge is pretty nondescript. You can see there there's just a single screw which holds the case together. And you can take that out to replace the shell if you do want to use the DSi shell that we looked at a minute ago. So overall, not too bad. Comes with everything that we're going to need to get set up other than the SD card. And the Easy Flash Omega will support up to a 128 gig SD card. So you've got plenty of space to work with for your games. I just went with a standard SanDisk Ultra 64 gig card, which should give me plenty of space for what I want to do with this. And once you've got your SD card all set up, all you need to do is slide it into the slot on the right hand side of the cartridge. Pretty straightforward. All right, so that's the Easy Flash cartridge itself. Let's hop over to the computer real quick and we'll get the software that we need to get this all set up and running. Now the first thing you're going to need to do, depending on the size of the SD card you're using, is reformat your SD card to the correct file system type. So if your SD card is 2 gig or less, you're going to need to format that to FAT or FAT16. If your SD card's 32 gig or less, you're going to need to format that to FAT32. And if your SD card's 128 gig or less, then you'll need to format that to XFAT. So for the folks that are running SD cards that require FAT16 or FAT32 file format, you can actually use the GUI format software. So we'll run through that real quick just to show you the process. So all you need to do is download the GUI format software and save that to your desktop. And then when you're ready to format your SD card, just pop that into your computer. Double click on the GUI format EXE file and you'll see a pop-up. Now in this pop-up, you can actually add a volume name. So I'm just gonna name mine GBA. And then all you need to do is hit the start button. A little information window will come up, just confirming that you do want to format your SD card. So just double check all your information to make sure that the correct drive is selected and then click OK. And the program will format your SD card. Once that's done, you can just hit close and your SD card is ready to use. Now, since my SD card is 64 gig and I can use the XFAT format, I'm gonna reformat that card one more time to use XFAT. So to do that, we just open the file explorer, navigate to the SD card, we right click, select format, and leave the volume label as GBA, so that's fine. And then you just click start. Again, you'll get a warning, just double checking to make sure that you do want to format the SD card. So just hit OK. And the SD card is now formatted to XFAT. And next, we're going to need some software to drop onto the SD card. So we're going to head over to the Easy Flash website, and I'll leave a link in the description so you guys can get there too. And then just scroll down until you see the new update banner. Underneath there, you'll see a couple of different links. The first one's for the latest kernel and firmware update. So you wanna download that. So just click on the download link here. Next is optional. If you wanna have cheats on your SD card, then you can download the cheat library by just clicking the download button here. And then finally, again, there's another optional pack. This is the thumbnails pack. So again, if you wanna add that to your SD card, you can click the download button right here. 
So once you've downloaded the software that you need, you're going to navigate to wherever your downloads go. So mine are in my downloads folder. And then if you took all three files, you should see three zip folders in your downloads. So we're just going to extract those by opening the zip folders up, selecting the file, and then selecting extract to, and then finding the SD card. Once you've selected the SD card, the file should extract to the root. So if you did get the other two optional downloads, just repeat this process until the contents of each of the folders is extracted onto your SD card. Once that's all done, we'll navigate to the SD card itself. And obviously you can see the folders and files which were extracted there in the root. So next, all you need to do is add some games. So I have a couple of ROMs on my desktop here and you can drop those directly on the root and they'll show up just fine in the menu. Or you can actually set up folders for each system. So Easy Flash Omega supports Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, and also runs NES games. So I'm going to set up folders here for each of the four systems. To do that, all you need to do is right click in the root of the directory, select new folder, and then you can name the folder whatever you want. So I'm just going to name my folders GBA, GB, GBC, and NES. Once each of the folders has been created, all you need to do is simply drag and drop your ROM files into the respective folders. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so once everything's done copying, we're actually done on the computer. So we can take the SD card out and pop it back into the Easy Flash Omega cartridge. And then we'll head over to the Game Boy Player and see how this works. Okay, so here we are on the Game Boy Player, and since this is the first time I've booted the Easy Flash Omega, we do need to do a kernel and firmware update. So in order to do that, before you turn the power on, make sure you're holding the right trigger, be it on your GameCube controller in this case, since I'm on the Game Boy Player, or the right shoulder button on your Game Boy Advance. So by doing that, it will automatically trigger the update mode, and you'll see there the percentage going up as it updates. And then once that's complete, it's going to confirm the current firmware, which on mine is uh, version 7. Confirm that you do want to update to the latest version, which is version 9. So in order to do that, you just hit A, and you'll see the progress percentage go up there pretty quickly. Once it's done, all you need to do is just do a quick power cycle. So I'm going to turn off the GameCube. Obviously, if you're on a Game Boy, just turn the Game Boy off, and then back on again. And you'll see the standard Game Boy Advance boot screen once again. All right, so now we're actually in the Easy Flash main menu. And you can see there that we've got all the folders that we just created, the four folders for the different game types that we made, and also a cheat folder and an images folder. So before we hop into any games, because we will take a look at those, if you hit the right shoulder button, it'll toggle to a couple of different menus. And the third one with the little game controller icon is your general settings. Now in here, you have a couple of different options. I'm not going to dig in too deep, I just want to get you guys up and running. But you can set the date and time, which I clearly didn't. Um, you also have the add-ons menu, which allows you to turn on different options within the game ROMs. So you have the reset option, the save state option, which I've actually turned on already. You have sleep mode and also the cheat mode. So if you're going to want to use cheats, you'll want to select that. All you need to do is scroll down, hit the A button on the blue box, which says set. Select the option that you want and then scroll back over to that same box, which will have turned gray and hit A again on OK to save the setting. There's two options that I'm going to change here real quick, just while we're in this menu, and they are the save key and load key. So I'm going to scroll down, just like I said before, and I'm going to change my save key to L, R, and A. So if I hit all three buttons at once, it should create a save state. So I'm going to hit A on set, scroll over, change select to A, scroll back over to the OK button, hit the A button again to save. And then I'm going to do the same again on the load key option and change start to B. And that button combination will be used to load save states. All right, so now we've been through the options. Let's take a look at some of the games. So I'm going to use the left shoulder button to scroll back to the main menu and I'm going to scroll down to the GBA folder and then within this folder you'll see a list of the games that you've got on the SD card 
So I have Ninja 50 here. So I'm just going to hit A. And you do have a couple of different options here. So you can do a clean boot, which is just a boot of the ROM itself with no extra add-ons. Or you can boot with add-ons if you wanted to use save states or cheats. So I'm going to do a clean boot real quick because I just want to take a look and see how the game works. And we'll come back to this and do a boot with add-on and check out save states in a few minutes. All you need to do is hit OK. And you'll see that the Easy Flash is creating the save file there. And then loading the game. And here we are. So this is Ninja 5.0 from Konami. Great little uh, side-scrolling action platformer. So we just go into the game here, start a new game, play it on easy, select the level. The intro is playing exactly as I remember it. Sounds great. No issues with the audio. And here we are in the game. So obviously you can see the game's playing exactly as we'd expect it to. Looks great. Uh, no graphical glitches or errors. Um, it's basically exactly the same as playing on a standard Game Boy Advance cartridge, so no complaints there. So Game Boy Advance games play great, but how about the other formats that the Easy Flash supports? So as you saw earlier, I did copy over some different games from different formats. So for the Game Boy, we have Cool Spot. So here we are in game. And once again, everything seems to be playing exactly as it should be. Obviously this one's in black and white, just because it's an original Game Boy game. But the controls are fine, sounds fine, no graphical glitches. So Game Boy games work just fine. Next we'll move over to the Game Boy Color. And for this one I chose Metal Gear. And you can see here, again, the game is working exactly as I would expect. No graphical glitches. The controls are good. So Game Boy Color is good. And finally, we'll take a look at how NES games run. And for this, I've chosen Russian Attack. And once again, as you can see, no major issues. So overall, the Easy Flash Omega does exactly what it says it does on the tin. No complaints. Now I did say we were going to take a look at the save state feature, which is one of the big features that I was excited about when I got the Easy Flash. So we'll quit out of Russian Attack here real quick, and we'll head back over to the main Easy Flash Omega menu. And what we're going to do is boot up Ninja 5.0 once again, but this time when we get to the load menu, we're actually going to select boot with add-on. So that should allow the save states to function. So here we are playing Ninja 5.0, just going through the game as you normally would. And right here, I think I'm going to do a save state. So I'm going to hit the L and R triggers along with the A button. And you'll see the screen pause for just a second. And that means the save state has been created. And then we'll carry on playing for just a couple of seconds. And now we'll try and reload the save state. So all I'm going to do to do that is hit the L and R triggers and hit the B button. And right there you can see we're right back where the save state was created. So that feature works great. So overall I'm really happy with the Easy Flash Omega. The setup is super straightforward and the functions it provides with the built-in emulators and the save state support are really, really good. So that's the unboxing and setup of the Easy Flash Omega flash cart for the Game Boy Advance. I hope you found the video helpful. If you have, please drop us a like and also consider subscribing. It's really helping the channel grow. And also, don't forget to check us out on Twitter. Thanks for watching.